I want to thank you so much for tuning in today to watch this message. And I believe that something is going to be said that's going to bless you. Hey, I believe the message has become your life. And as we prepare ourselves for the next chapter in our lives, God is going to use us. Listen and be blessed. The scripture. Leviathan. Did I say it right? Did I mess it up again? Oh my God. Leviathan then. Verse 1 of Job 41. Canest thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord? Which let it, which thou let it down. And then we proceeded on to the, the last verse of this chapter of Job, verse 41. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all children of pride. So this term, this name here is somewhat synonymous with pride. Um, I have been talking um, about two weeks now, two to three weeks, about rejection. I, I really need you to hear me on this. Please hear me. We've been talking about rejection, the spirit of rejection. Whether you want to admit it or not or acknowledge it, every one of us have gone through rejection. We have been rejected by somebody at some point in our life. For some people, they are able to shake it off and move on a little better than others, but it affects all of us. People who have been rejected will struggle to realize who they are and who God have made them. Rejection in your life and in my life can and oftentimes does open up the door for all kind of spirits. Now, you may not believe in demons. You may not believe that they exist. But what are you going to do with that part of the New Testament? Because it talks about it. Um, demons, devils, the devil himself. It talks about it. It's there. I don't believe that when Jesus was taken up into heaven that all the demons decided that they were going to leave the earth. Wouldn't that have been great? But they were here before Jesus came and they were here afterwards. All you have to do is read the book of Acts and you will, you will see that they were definitely here. So what are they? They're fallen spirits, okay? And, and, and so my, my message today is not really about demons, but I think we need to be aware of how they, how they can manipulate and how they can talk to us. Okay, you, you may think that you are above it, but I don't think we are. These spirits can talk to us, and they do, and they will talk to us, and it sounds like you talking, okay? Um, so um, you, you, you have to be careful. I think we become more susceptible to the voices of these spirits when we, um, two, uh, there are two times when we get really angry, or when we get really happy, okay, you're going to be attacked. Um, for a lot of people, they, you know, they get mad, we get angry, and then something slip. That's what we say. It slips out of our mouth. You know, we talk different. We use language that we don't normally use. And then we excuse it because... We say we were angry, we were mad. Um, but these are the times that 
the enemy can, he really come, he zeroes in, and these devils can attack your mind. Also, when you are very sad or you went through a trauma in your life, like rejection, it can open you up to receive these spirits a lot easier than normal. And this is why you got to keep yourself, you know, check yourself. Um, this is critical. You, they do not respect who you say you are. And they do not respect where you are, even in church. You're going to be attacked by the devils, the demons. Um, now, when a person gets hurt or gets rejected, like I said, you're more susceptible to these, these attacks of the devil. I'm not saying that you're possessed with a demon. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that you can be manipulated by them. You can, re you can receive or a way of thinking that they want you to think. And thinking promotes feelings. And feelings can push and lead you into actions. And so you have to be very careful. Because while you are claiming the victory, you can walk in total destruction. Oh, boy. The spirit of pride, it's where I am now. Uh, what I want to talk about. Um, in Matthew chapter 12, the Lord spoke something that I think is, is needful for me to bring in this message. Um, he said this. Matthew 12 or 45, he's talking about an unclean spirit. Um, let me back up just a little bit. He says, verse 43, when the, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Notice the, it says not just a, but the unclean spirit when he's gone out of a man. Um, the scripture says, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith unto himself, then he saith, I will return unto my house from which I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, garnished. Then he, here's a part now, verse 45, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Okay. So this is put in scripture. Jesus said there are going to be, even so shall it be also unto this generation. And so this spirit uh, that we're talking about here, spirit of rejection, opens the door for all kinds of spirits to come in. Um, I think what I wanted to point out was that there can be other spirits or clusters or spirits that will attack you and they will try their best to persuade you to do what they want you to do, to say what they want you to say, to go where they want you to go because they know that if you do any of those things, then you're going to find yourself in a defeated place. All you have to do is begin reading in the Bible. This is the first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 3. You see where the, the persuasion of this devil, the demon, or the serpent, I would say, that persuaded the woman to disobey God. She ate from the tree. Now, um... Once that happened, the Bible says that their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. So it's not the physical eyes because that was already there, but it's the eyes of their mind. It's open. Now, so you have an enemy that is trying to invade your thoughts, okay, trying to get you to think the wrong way because the Bible is clear 
And it tells us that as a person think it, so is he. You are not going to walk in victory and think in the dump. If you're thinking in the, in the, in the landfill, you are not going to be flying the friendly skies. I hope that make, made some sense to you. The demons have made it their job to attack your mind, to keep you on the dump, to keep you in a defeated place. To, so you think defeated, you talk defeated, you act defeated. Yeah. Even if you don't act like you're defeated, even if you don't talk like you're defeated, if he can just get you to think it, you're still going to be defeated. Eventually, eventually you're going to talk defeat if you're thinking it. You may be able to, to hide it for a while, but eventually it's going to come out. Okay, okay. Now, why are you saying all this, Pastor? Why, why? Because I said these devils, they attack us in, in kind of clusters. It's not just one spirit, but many, and they will come after you. So one of the spirits that I want to talk about just briefly is the spirit of pride. Pride. You should know this, that pride is a very stubborn spirit, right? Okay. And pride will show up at almost every, every, almost every situation in your life at some time or another. So stubbornness is hard to be delivered from. I wanted to read that scripture in Job 41. Um, because pride manifests itself in the spirit realm of this character that he mentions. That God mentions this, by the way. When you look up the meaning of this word, it's, uh, that name, oh, here we go again. Le Leviathan. Hey, I, I'm getting it now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the meaning of it seems to be some scaly creature or like a like a alligator or a crocodile um, you know the Philistines had a god that they worshiped and they called him Dagon and he was a half fish and a half man it's a fish from the waist down and a man from the waist up um, but in the book of Job this demonic spirit is called the king of the proud. Okay? I'm going somewhere with this. Whether you go with me or not, I'm going to go. And so this proud spirit, it operates. Anytime proud, pride is involved. There are other spirits that's there too, but pride is a difficult one to break free from. And the Bible plainly tells us that God resisted the what? Yeah. And he give, give his grace to the humble. The devils know this. Um, we are told in the Bible that even Lucifer was perfect in beauty from the day that he was created until his heart was lifted up with pride. Pride can destroy you. Pride, pride, pride. It includes such things as arrogance, haughtiness, being puffed up. Self-exaltation, okay? Rebellion, stubbornness, defiance, anti-submissiveness, egotism, perfection, okay? It, and, there's, and the list goes on and on. Pride brings destruction. It does. It calls a person to err from the truth of God's word, even the Christian. I told you what God said in James 4 and 6, that God resisted the proud. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is to hate pride and arrogance, Proverbs 8 and 13. God wants to deliver us from pride. He does. Now, you can accept pride and embrace it and think that it's okay, but it can destroy you. 
pride can easily slip into your life, especially if God, all of us have been gifted with something. God has gifted you to be good at something. I, I don't know exactly what you're good at. I, I know I have the gift of gab. <laughs> so I have to be careful with, with that. You can take Something that God have gifted you with and your head get blowed up. Okay? You got to be very careful not to go there because it's going to cause you to be destroyed. Um, so God, he hates pride. Let me tell you sometimes some of the things that pride can cause. Sometimes pride can cause sickness. Yes. Yes. God is able to bring us low, bring low those who walk in pride. And God can do that and he will. This spirit of pride, it will block you from praying. A proud person, it's hard to do that. It will block you from worshiping. It will block the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. So within this, the spirit of rejection, when you feel rejected, you remember what happened with Cain? God rejected Cain because of his offering. This was all about worship. And God told him, if you do well, you'll be accepted. But the spirit of pride got a hold of Cain. He was very proud of the works of his hand and what he had produced. And so God rejected this because it was not what God demanded. And so he was not listening to any of the reasoning that God was saying. He simply got angry. And you know the results that happened. He killed his brother. So you got to be very careful. Now, you got to be careful because you don't want to take credit for what God has done. Oh, boy. Whatever it is that you're good at, maybe you're good, like, like, uh, big dog over there, he's a good, he's a baker. He knows how to bake those cakes, right, dog? But he can't, if he, if his heart get lifted up with pride, he, he's going to be in trouble. You don't get too high that God can't bring you down. And so you, you really have to learn how to walk in humbleness and walk in lowliness of mind. Pride brings on destruction. Pride brings on a curse. Pride will cause a person to err from the truth. Pride will do that. Praise God, somebody. So, so you want to make sure, you should make sure that you walk in humility. Because that's the person that God's going to raise up. Oh, boy. One of the things that, you know, I, I try to do, I, if you know me well enough, you know, I, you should know that I really try hard not to get puffed up. I really try hard to walk, uh, to be humble, to not take credit for things that God gives me or God done for me. I, I try to always give the credit back to the Lord. I, you know, there's, a, there's this pseudo credit that we give to God sometimes. Well, you know, God be glory. But, but the, is God really being glorified? in my life? A am I really walking humbly before God? You see, sometimes one of the things that can blow you up is money. Yeah. Uh, money is not evil. If you've got some evil money, bring it up here. I'm going to pray over it. We're going <laughs> to use it for the glory of God. <laughs> But it's not evil. It's not. It's the love of it. You can do some great things with money. 
But if you love money, it will destroy you. Help me, somebody. Help me. I'm not telling you to just get rid of all your money. No. But you need to get rid of all your love for money. Praise God, somebody. Praise the Lord. Now, so God knows what he's doing. He does. And God wants the Holy Spirit to be able to flow in you and you, he wants you to be able to flow in the Holy Spirit, but it can't happen if you're walking in pride. All right? So ask yourself this what am I good at? Hmm? You good? You good on the, at the computer? You good on your job at nursing? What am I good at? Usually those will be the areas that you're going to find the, the enemy working hard. To cause a spirit of pride to get, to get for you to get puffed up. What am I? Ha what do I have that I really, I really like this? Okay. One of the things that I had a problem with years and years and years and years ago, can't be too many years from thirty nine, right? But uh, I had a car that I was proud of. I did. And this was during a time when I was on the run. I was, um, I was a man on the run. I was running from God. I knew what God had called me to do. I didn't want to do it because I was loving the applauds, you know, the praises of the crowd. And, and so you wouldn't find me in church on Sunday morning. You would find me somewhere at the car wash. Mm, mm, mm. What was I doing? I was washing my God. For real. I'm not kidding. Um, it was my car. That meant everything to me. And um, so, I, 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 knowing what I know now, I try to shy away from those kind of things. So if you see me driving a dirty car, you say, well, pastor does that on purpose, right? I um I had there was a car that I, I had this is now this I'm fast forwarding this has been I don't know some, a few years ago um, I I love to drive BMWs uh, why do I like driving BMWs because they hug the road. You get a few tickets, then you slow down. But um, but they do. They handle very well. Uh, and I was um, I was up in Charlotte. It's been, been years ago, and I saw this. I just pulled over at the uh, dealer there and, and saw this BMW. It was an X6. And man! And God said to me, he said, son, I'm going to give it to you. Whoa! And, you know, Sure enough, the next day, I'm, I'm driving off the lot in this X6. Boy, and I love that car. Until about two years ago, the sonic nerve got talking to me. And uh, after, after I, I had the issue with the sonic nerve, I couldn't hardly get in and out of it. So you see me riding around in a van now. <laughs> and I'm loving it. <laughs> have, I, have I been humbled? I don't know. But I sure feel better. <laughs> so, <laughs> folks, you know, isn't that something, you know, you, I'm in a funeral possession, right? They, we go into the grave site. Everybody driving in nice cars. Where's the pastor? I said, here I am right here. I said, what you driving? This van. <laughs> so here I come. I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> you know, am I ashamed? No, I ain't shame. I feel good. <laughs> no, for real. I'm telling you. I, I was telling, I think I was telling, um, I was talking to Sister Douglas yesterday. I was telling her, I said, you know what? No, last week, I said, 
getting in and out of that, that car, I had to do this, do that, lean over, oh. I said, but in this van, I just step up, S slide in. <laughs> <laughs> when it's time to get out, I just turn and glide on out. <laughs> oh, God. Praise Jesus, everybody. Whoa. Let me tell you, you hey, you, you start hurting enough, you get rid of all that, all that stuff. Listen, I'm telling you, 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 you may have shoes, heels that you like to wear. You, you let your feet get hurt and the feet hurt bad enough, you'll get rid of them heels and you walk in there flats. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Listen, I got to I gotta close. This is a holiday weekend. And <laughs> okay. Y'all hearing me? Listen, seriously. I've seen some of y'all do this now. You know you couldn't praise God with the heels on. Boop. Boop. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lordy. Help me, Jesus. Okay. So sometimes you have to, you know, just be careful. Thanks of God. That's what I'm saying. Be careful. You know, don't let, don't let your head swell up. Uh, whatever God gives you, thank God for it. Keep that thing in its proper place. Don't worship the thing, but worship the giver. And here's what I found. I have found this out over and over again. Now, you know, now I want to scream and run and jump and shout, but I, I ain't got time. Well, here's what I found. The more credit I give God from my heart about what he's doing in my life, the more God gives me. For real. The more doors he open up. So I'm not crazy enough to put the, the gift ahead of the giver. So I'm going to praise him for all that he did, all he's doing, and all that he's going to do. Praise be to Jesus, somebody. I'll say like a friend of mine, and I can call this, I can call her my friend, Pastor Shirley Season. And she sang that song. She she said, she told him, she was saying, they this man, they were talking about him, and he he got to tell them, look at what God had done for me. See all this land out here is mine. You see all these crops is mine, and you want me to stop praising God? I'll praise him right now. Hey, hold my mule. God has been good to you. God has blessed you. Don't let pride come between you and your praise, you and your worship, you and your God. Now, no, everybody stand. I, I got I to gotta stop. If you've been hurt, and you have been, all of us have, You've been hurt. You've been rejected. You've been maybe maybe you got rejected by the girl you were trying to talk to in the sixth grade. <laughs> Whatever it may be, God is able to heal you. It sounds funny, but there are people in this sanctuary today who are carrying wounds from 15, 20, 30 years ago that they've never gotten over. And these wounds have opened up the door for these spirits to come into their life and to make the last state of their life. There's a time right now when some of you should be flowing. It sh I mean, man, you should be on top of your game. And the enemy is working hard to destroy your life. I want to pray with you. Will you get in the aisle that's closest to you? We're going to believe God. We believe God with you. We got to destroy this enemy. 
the baker is coming. See the baker, I tell you, you, must, you really must put that thing ahead of God. <laughs> no, I know that's not what it is. The Lord knows how to deliver. He knows what to do.